Welcome, everyone. Great to see you at this wonderful venue um, with all the planes ready to take off and um, the context, in the context of air and taking off and also with a new decade we are entering with all the ambitious goals so many have for 2030. I think it's the perfect time and venue to going from the talking and planning and piloting to the doing. And I think this is also seen um, a lot in media recently. This whole shift, um, we've talked a lot, we've planned a lot, we've piloted a lot, and now it's also all about doing. That's really important. Um, I would li just like to give you a very brief intro of who I am and, and why I'm here today. And um, on the screen, you can still see um, Fashion for Good. Um, unfortunately, Emily is not here today. Um, a warm, yeah, I should say regards from all the wonderful people at Fashion for Good. Um, we at Textile Exchange, we work closely with Fashion for Good in Amsterdam. Um, they're a wonderful um, incubator and accelerator of um, startups. So definitely also check out what Fashion for Good is doing, also releasing some great reports. And um, so they are busy doing while we are here talking. <laughs> So my name is Simone, I'm a sustainability consultant and also work for the NGO Textile Exchange. Just a few minutes on why um, collaboration and alliances are so key for Textile Exchange, also as an NGO, um, as well as um, a few words about um, one of the main sustainable development goals, and you saw it when you entered the main hall, the big uh, sustainability goals um, awaiting you and why um, seven, number 17 is so crucial. Yeah, Textile Exchange is a, is a global NGO. We are, have staff in uh, 15 countries, even we are a small team, and we have about 400 members, so we're growing fast. And um, I think one of the reasons why we're growing fast is that we are inclusive. We are an inclusive NGO, meaning um, no matter where you are globally, no matter where, if you're big or small, no matter where you are, throughout the value chain of textiles, and also no matter if you're a beginner or if you're super advanced on your sustainability journey, you can become a member. With Once you have a shared vision with us, and the vision is to minimize the harmful impacts and maximize the positive impacts. We do that with a focus on fiber and materials and um, also focus on circularity as well as the SDGs as a framework. We have a new Climate Plus target. So also as an NGO, we set ourselves a target for 2030, and that is um, reducing the textile industry's impact with raw materials um, when it comes to climate emissions, so CO2 emissions, by 35 to 45%. So we are, um, of course, this is a bandwidth, which we are still... Um, um, investigating on, on how we can achieve as much as possible, but also as an NGO with our members, we have a, um, set ourselves now a um, first time we've set a very concrete action-oriented um, target. So when it comes to um, alliances as an NGO, and you're thinking usually about the whole value chain, but also we have a lot of more stakeholders to, to consider. That is um, in research and development, that is universities, that is governmental organizations. We also, for example, work with the German Textile Partnership in Germany. We um, also work with standard and accreditation bodies, because we also own standards. So when you come across a responsible down standard or a global recycled standard, it's not that we're just making it up, but we're working with global multi-stakeholder groups to develop and ensure um, the standard is meaningful and that this whole shared responsibility of a standard owner, an accreditation body and a certification body, that this independency is in place. So we're very much relying on um, alliances here as well. Another example uh, recently is um, we're working with, um, we're having a responsible leather working group. And uh, there's another very big organization, it's the Responsible Beef Roundtable. And obviously leather and beef are very closely connected. So in this case, as an NGO, we are even sharing um, a, per, a staff member to make sure that the responsible beef work and the responsible leather work 
is, um, is jointly joining forces for the better good. And this person is based in Argentina, so right in the heart of, of beef and leather production, just um, as another example. Of course, important is also event organizations like Messe Frankfurt, which we collaborate globally. So also in New York and in Shanghai, we've been doing several um, exhibits and work workshops and, and moderating wonderful panels. Why I would like to briefly talk about the, um, sustainable development goal number 17 is um, it is the partnership um, goal. It's the partnership to make all the other 16 goals a success. And it is a crucial one because um, it, it's, it sets the, the frame and it, it, it shows that um, no individual company or organization can change what, what we all want to and need to change. So um, the five crucial components of this sustainable goal number 17 are finance, capacity, bil capacity building, systemic issues, technology, and trade. And I think the, with these five words, I would like to introduce my panelists to you and um, why we are here today to talk about collaboration in one of the most dynamic and also sometimes men, uh, put as one of the leader categories in the denim category. And we will be talking about finance, capacity building, systemic issues, technology and trade, for example. So let me first um, introduce my three panelists to you. I will sit here. <laughs> Thank you. And we have um, Ebro from ISCO with us. We have Patrick from Genealogia. And we have Lavinia from Armed Angels. Representing more or less the full value chain, let's say I'm the customer, so we can um, have a meaningful discussion also on that front. And um, I, as the title shows, I would first like to ask um, this question about the value chain, I mean, a word very often used. Um, so, April, what is a real value chain for ISCO? What is ISCO, first of all, and what is a real value chain for ISCO? Um, hi, everyone. Um, ISCO is the mill, denim mill, based in Turkey, with the capacity of 300 million meters and gives service worthwhile more than 36 sales points. And with this capacity, we have a huge function to give service in terms of woven technology worthwhile which mix with related innovation. So while we are doing this, we have partners as well. Not the only one that we give service as product in sales, but also the partners that we create our supply chain. So value chain basically means for us how we developed each other in time one to another and how we can step further to give true partnership ideas. Thank you. And um, as, a, as a CSR and global sustainability ma manager, and what, what is your main aim in this context? Um, I'm handling CSR and sustainable business together in the field area. So the projects that we are handling, we are not you know, the separating social and environment aspects. It has to be mixed together because they are so much related to each other. With whatever you do, you have to do with human and human, what they are doing should be in healthy conditions. And also the product that you mainly do and give the service should be a kind of mirror at the end of the value chain process. So when we are doing you know, the, our projects with our customers on that part, not with our tiers, we basically doing a roadmap. We would like to understand, instead of giving a, a four square idea on the sustainability or the project is this, we would like to understand the need of final consumer of these brands. As far as we develop it, 
we can give several different services and not only one fiber or alternative fiber ideas, we can also structure their ongoing business, how they should add sustainability on their ongoing business. Because it's very critical to understand how much you would like to change the buying habit. This much you can be go further. So we would like to be in partner with the buying habit loyalty of the final consumer, final approacher. That's why we would like to work with partners to understand our aim and also that we have a mutual idea at the end. And I'm so happy today that we are here. It's not only that we are chosen, but it's also the reality. Um, with Patrick, with Lavinia, with different positions in the industry, in the value chain, we many times meet and already create an idea how we can merge. Because sustainability is the only platform that you give up competition and even you compete, you would like to do something for better. So it's so happy that to see right now in the industry, share points is not only the know-how, but also the success stories. Thank you, very valid point that this pre-competitive space, uh, for some it, it, uh, they first have to um, familiarize themselves with being more open, may maybe more sharing than they used to be, or um, are first of all comfortable with? This is also, you know, the good that you underline. Was before thinking that because after talking about share and care, the second and the third words come as transparency and the third one traceability. It's something, you know, the five words now in the sustainable, the people think that it's enough to be enough sustainable. Transparency is not a word for ISCO. Um, to open the doors and show what's happening inside. Also, you have to tell why it's happened. It's the only change in school. There are many meals, there are around success stories. Appreciate that. Hopefully, it will continue. But the difference of ISCO, not only showing what is inside, but also make the industry peers to understand why we do this way. Because the unique success and the only major power is not enough to level up the industry. That's why our role is nowadays more a big brother role to make the industry levels. So capacities are not uh, naturally given, just maybe because we want the same thing. It doesn't mean that the, the know-how is there. So you want to you underline also the why, not only the what, but also our why. Our company, you're doing what you're Sanko, more than a century right now is in the industry, and Isco more than 30 years. So it's not enough to develop this kind of success for a century just to say what you are doing. Also your methodology, your investments, the people that you choose to combine with your way. These are very carefully chosen. And whereas, you know, the 10 years ago, 15 years ago, sustainability as a word was not spoken, you know, the, our management already chose to follow this way. So that's why now we are lucky that we have something already done, homework already done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Patrick, um, I think uh, one key word was also um, know-how and sometimes things change quite dramatically or disruptively. Also a very common uh, word uh, much used is, is, is the whole disruption of a whole industry or process and you work for one of these disruptors, I would say, Genealogia. Um, what do you do there as a sales and marketing division director and what what is different about uh, Genealogia? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having us here. Uh, quick words about Genealogia. We are right away this year in the 25th anniversary of our company, which is, um, I think, a, still a very young company, but if you look at the achievements, what we have done is pretty pretty good. We are a Spanish company, headquartered in Valencia, but meanwhile, we are active in more than 60 countries, having more than 3,000 machine systems running worldwide, uh, focused on sustainability. So when we started going out, coming back to your question, we put it even a little bit more stronger. We said, we want to create a revolution. We, we, we want to break the walls down. We want to make things different than other people did. We don't want to make this um, denim industry the, with the dirty kind of look as it is. We just want to make it clean and simple. And um, this is what we put in our 
uh, DNA of the company. This is what we are living every day, and this is our value, which we are living basically. And all the we are a technology provider who doesn't know we are busy with machinery like laser, ozone, nano bubble technology in order to reduce sources like water, energy, electricity, chemicals. What we are using to to have less impact on this world. So this is what we are doing, what we are busy with. My role in that is um, I'm taking care for an area um, based in Turkey with my team, where we are luckily connecting from the sourcing map over ISCO fabric mills to the final brands. Uh, we see us as a service in the sector, bringing the idea, the goods together and make it possible. And also bringing it closer to the customers, I've, I've learned. Can you give an example how also the whole um, geographies of a value chain can change with uh, working differently? Yeah, um, some of our ideas is just to simplify processes. And once you simplify processes, means you can easily take it from one part and bring it to the other part. So having spoken that one means we don't, if, if you're using less resources, we can bring basically our ideas also production back to other places, if that's what you, you ask to say. We can be able, today we are producing in big, big batches somewhere in Turkey, somewhere in Pakistan and Bangladesh, but also in Tunisia, Europe. Um, why not to produce tomorrow back in Germany? These are kind of idea solution we're going to bring up with um, technologies, um, bringing back, having said that one, uh, communication with the final consumer, I think it's something with the brands, what, what we should do, and we should talk about that one, how we can improve that. But um, I think it's an aim of all of us, we want to be transparent. Mm. And, and over this maybe. Um, Genealogia plays a role to, to give you a platform, give you technology to do those kind of things. Okay, so it doesn't take millions of investment to put a, a plant somewhere, but it's... Um Put it, put it that way. One, one of our real values is if we, whatever we want to do, one thing is we have to stay cost neutral. We, nobody, I believe, is really want to pay extra for sustainability today. Um, and the final consumer, I think it's very difficult to, to bring that over. This is what we are hearing. So from our partners manufacturing point of view, in, in the supply chain says, no, we cannot increase the cost of production. So. If we create a new technology, if you create a new process, our main aim is we have to stay cost neutral. We don't want to increase the production cost. Um, but at the end of the day, the invest starting investment is there. But as in any industry, if you want to change something, you, it's a starting investment, but the running cost shouldn't be more than today. This is... Okay. I'm sure we will come back to that um, aspect. Um, Lavinia, over to you as a brand what and heavily engaged with your value chain. What is real value for you as a brand? So, uh, hi, my name is Lavinia from Armed Angels. Uh, for the ones who don't know us, uh, we are um, an eco and fair fashion brand based in Cologne in Germany. Uh, we are pretty new to the denim industry. We started in 2015. Um, and scaled up our denim production with ISCO, being part of our really, uh, truly responsible supply chain um, in 2018. And um, your first question was, now I'm... It's about, um, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's about creating um, real value chain mm. with an emphasis on the real, mm. um, which I know you do for any product categories, but specifically on the journey to the Armed Angels denim mm -hmm. product. Okay. What, what is your um, focus in, a, in okay. real value? Okay. Um, yeah, I think the industry is talking a, lo a lot about supply chain and value chain. And uh, well, first of all, you actually have to get to know your chain. Uh, you have to do your homework and get to get to know your real partners um, in the chain. Um, and secondly, um, you have to check and verify 
um, where are the values and not only the values but also the hotspots uh, to be able uh, to work on this and um, as armed angels I mean sustainability is in our DNA transparency is in our DNA traceability is in our DNA uh, we actually have the approach that we do not launch um, a super eco uh, capsule collection so our approach is that each and every product um, is as transparent, as traceable, um, as ecologically um, and responsibly produced um, as possible. And yes, and that's what we are basically doing. So also uh, talking about denim, um, we actually know where the cotton comes from. We know where the cotton is spun. And um, we know um, where the yarn dyeing has been happening. We know where the fabric was woven. Um, and we also, of course, know our um, first year supplier. So we do not only start with the first year supplier, we really go into the chain and check each and every step. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think the whole industry should do. Because without knowing what you're doing, um, you cannot improve. And as a as a label, when you said you started your denim business in 2015 and um, first of all had to do your homework and identifying what is the right product, the right maybe fabric blend, maybe the right manufacturer, the right finishing, um, how did you, what was needed to to take these decisions? Like what, what did you investigate yourself or did you rely on, on, on on consultants or did you just rely on standards that are out there in approved independent standards how did you how did you find the right ones mm -hmm. what was needed mm -hmm. uh, well first of all what is needed not only for armed angels but for every brand or every CSR uh, stuff is um, the commitment from the management especially from the upper management um, and secondly as I said before we started our denim journey in 2015 we had three fits uh, we had our whole supply chain uh, in Turkey and I started at Armed Angels in November 2017 uh, and I started and my boss told me okay we, we have to scale up denim, uh, we have to get to know the whole value chain as well um, as for denim as for jersey and we have to check if our existent already got certified supply chain um, is in line with our internal standards and uh, one thing is you should never only rely on existing standards um, and on documents um, and so on and so forth. Um, so I started a project and I visited um, the four biggest um, eco green denim mills um, in Europe and in Turkey. And uh, we actually started with the mills. And one thing, if you're not so familiar with denim, you have to know that denim is always a yarn dyed. It's in well, the indigo one um, is always yarn dyed, um, the blue one, and um, in the denim industry, um, everybody's only talking about the finishing um, and the washing and how to reduce the impact over there. But it's actually super, super, super important to know uh, what has been happening before at the yarn dyeing stage, um, what uh, indigo dyes have been used, what post treatment was. Um, uh, Pre-treatment um, has been used. Um, what color fixation rates have um, the dyes in order to be able to actually um, go to your washing unit and develop even more sustainable washes. And uh, yeah, and part of our journey was uh, getting to know Isco. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was really. That was a beautiful thing because, mm -hmm. like, I I had heard a lot about Isco uh, before, and um, in the premier communication, like, they were not so transparent I, as I had hoped for, and they were telling all the time, "You have to, you have to come to our factory because seeing is believing." And I was like, "Okay, but you know, this is nowadays. You know, we are in 2018. Uh, everybody has to be transparent." And well, then finally, I traveled to Turkey and uh, visited Isco, and um, I can tell you, like. Uh, I've never seen such a denim mill because it's a huge one. I think they are producing 250, three, ah, no, f wow, f fuck, uh, three, <laughs> 300 million meters um, of denim um, fabric uh, per year. And um, the factory unit actually looks like uh, the matrix. 
the slasher and rope dying. And what um, I liked about Isco, because like in their DNA and in their mindset, they are actually like armed angels because we always have the same approach. Uh, I mean, they're also working for conventional um, customers, but um, like every process is thought through. Their chemical management is on point. Uh, I just read that you are now uh, the first the first ones uh, being Ecotech Step um, certified. And uh, yeah, then I knew, okay, this is the right partner. And um, yeah. Let me, let me ask Ibru then, when a, um, a company pr with your size, when a um, smaller, s newer label from Germany comes and approaches you with a lot of questions and being difficult, first of all, especially not being a global player in the denim world, how was your, how do you, how would you, and you talked about um, selecting carefully also um, yeah. your partners. Um, so new uh, brands that, that approach you and being, first of all, difficult, how do you deal with those? Um, first of all, this is culture of the company. It's not only sustainable business that we deal or the projects that we choose. Um, on the way, just start with an example. For example, here with the technology partners and with the brands just sits and has already, you know, the thing that I should do this way because my customer will understand this way. It's easy to tell, you know, the God story and, you know, the, the chemical should be organized. So, uh, and in the team, it's like a basketball, you know, the match, you know, the everybody, you cannot, everybody cannot be shooter, you know, the somebody has to do something else to give pass, you know, the, the control, and always there should be someone who has experience, big brother, you know, the around. Again, here the story, um, we choose the partners that we need. This is first. We believe, and long-term ideas like us, not the trendy, you know, the fancy, Today's, you know, the snacks, you know, the ideas that's followed by others. How we can go further together instead of just a capsule, you know, the project. How we can develop together something. Like Patrick, for example. You know, the genealogy already, you know, the settled great, you know, the ideas with also EIM scoring and everything. And also Isco did, you know, the, in fabric terms because responsibilities are different. The big mistake in the industry, up to us, we wait same responsibility for every member of the supply chain, which is trendy, let's say. Recycling is very trendy, you know, the do, you know, the recycling. Everybody, expectation from, can you do something recycling? You can settle the rule. The expectation from all value chain, which is trendy, is same. But what we advise, and this is a power of ISCO and the Sanko group, that we can also direct the industry with our choices. Not only the fabric that we developed by copied by others, but also the technology that you developed can be pioneer as well. So we turn the page, we turn the scenario, okay, the others are following us. Let's do something for others to follow in the true way. So we say, which is needed by any member of the supply chain. Our responsibility, we are tier two. Even, you know, the many things that, you know, the, you can be tier three because of the subcontractors of the tier ones. But the generality is, oh, for example, this never works with subcontractors. That's why as a tier two, I have to be sure that how can I support tier one for the full package? And how can I level up the scoring of the fabric when it comes to garment? So I should give something to Patrick that's already in the scoring grade in terms of waste and carbon footprint. Then life is easy. He can add his ideas. He can add, you know, the, his technology and make it better. So I understood. Um, it's a bit like a team, like a sports team. So that in a way um, the, the direction is clear. World Cup or something, <laughs> and um, th the goals are clear, the mindset is clear, um, so a lot to be shared, but then very specific qualities are also needed and very specific responsibilities within. Um, at the same time, we talked a lot about capacity and about learning. Patrick, I would, I would like to ask you, um, how, how, do you how can you ensure your 
the know-how is, is, is there. Let's say you, you're confronted with a brand used to the designers, the project, product managers, the sourcing people. I mean, all these people um, have to have still a different understanding of, of how the finishing or how f certain visual effects are, are achieved. And, and how, do you, how do you approach these people? That's the biggest challenge for us. I mean, you, I think we, we, today we have a technology where you can basically do 99% of everything what we could do traditional. Today we can do it on a, a new technical way. Um, the challenge is that we can give Armed Angel the product what they're looking for. So it starts with the fabric, then with the right finishing, and then it has to become a commercial product which the final consumer loves and want to wear. So the challenge here is um, we eliminate like stones, like permanganate from our production line, which means we have to speak with ISCO, give us a fabric which with our technology, instead of making permanganate spray, we want to do by a laser the required bleach look for armed angels. So um, we know the experts what we need to do, but then a new designer comes. And we as Genealogia, we are a company with open doors. We, we have a department, we call it the brain box. And um, this is basically a design and a process department where we try to team up and partner up with the brands um, by explaining with the new technologies the, uh, the product which we can achieve with the pros and cons because you need to change your sourcing map, you need to, you need to dig into what is really needed and what is possible. And then we have to sit with the start of the supply chain with this one saying, our technology can do this. We need an indigo dye according to an ozone treatment, according to a laser treatment, and we have to develop the, this fabric. So this is our responsibility. And I think, again, we have to split the responsibility. The biggest challenge is, yes, we need to convince, train the people in the industry to make click in the mind and saying, no, we don't want to have this stone wash look anymore with a high and low created with a beautiful gray cast by one hour of stone wash. Why can't we do it with an enzyme and an um, ozone together? That's enough. Fair enough. And, and, and this is constantly tra traveling, visiting, speaking, showing samples, taking by the hand, standing in front of the machine and saying this is the way how we do it. And I can imagine this doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen if you're at three diff in three different countries and uh, sometimes in three different time zones and, and on such a sensitive product like uh, um, effects on denim. Um, Lavinia, what was the, were the challenges for you um, without like, being in one office and, and, and speaking the same language all the time? Um, this, Tell me a little bit about the, the challenges, because your denim business grew tremendously, so you did something right, obviously. Um, how, how, how did you tackle the challenges? Well, first of all, we like challenges. Um, <laughs> that's why we are here. Um, it's actually part of our mission that we want to find a solution for the ecological and social um, uh, problems of our time. Um, but basically, we speak the same language. And it's also very important when I'm talking about armed angels that not only me as a CSR person speaks you know, my CSR language. It's also super important to integrate uh, the product development team um, in the development of the product. So I'm not there to tell her, yeah, well, this is restricted. You're not supposed to use this chemical, blah, 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 blah. And we did that at Armed Angels. And for example, my colleague, our uh, denim product manager and designer, uh, she actually traveled frequently to Tunisia uh, to our denim mill. And it's not that our Tunisian finisher sends the swatches with the washes uh, to Cologne. And then we decide, no, she travels to Tunisia, stays over there for one week, and is in the dyeing lab and in the washing lab one week, developing the washes um, with the masters, and they are real masters, mm -hmm. uh, over there. So even the designers and product manager, as well as everybody in the fashion industry, we have to become like, I always call it scientific artists, you know, um, it's like in art, you know, when you're restricted, um, you become really creative. And I think um, that was a, a big part of our uh, success story because um, we now are able to create really bright washes below the God standard, 
which nobody before was actually able what, to do. What means what means below the God standard? <laughs> Below the God standard, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then I have to. No, I, I know yeah. that you did. Uh, that you you have a very scientific approach. With uh, you showed we me the. To. We all the, have to. The kind of assessment and 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 rating parameters, mm -hmm. but um, just. I mean, there's always, I think there's always room for improvement. There is, God's GOTS is a great standard, but tell me where you, you're more ambitious than uh, GOTS. Well, first of all, well, more ambitious. Um, well, first of all, Armed Angels, middle-sized company, uh, I'm alone in my position, so I'm actually not able to implement an own uh, chemical standard or an RSL or MRSL and, um, I don't know, instruct a whole audit team uh, to go <laughs> and audit ISCO <laughs> or our um, Tunisian uh, partner. So actually, like middle-sized companies like Armed Angels, we are, of course, dependent on industry standards. But uh, for Armed Angels, I always say we use these standards um, as instruments. You know, we are not the standard. And there's always room for improvement. And as I said before, when I was checking the Danimals, the indigo um, yarn dyeing stages, um, of course, they had to be got certified. Um, they were supposed to use uh, chemicals from the so-called God's positive list um, in production. But for example, and that's why we also chose um, ISCO. Um, as one of our uh, strategic partners, uh, because the God standard is a very complementary standard, but for example, the God standard doesn't define actual requirements for uh, the wastewater treatment plants. And uh, in the case of ISCO, for example, they al already since 25 years, they have a regenerative ETP. Um, so over there, um, chemical input, minimizing, um, other partners as well, they are actually able to reuse some of the indigo dye in the indigo dye process as well as the water in the, in the process. Uh, so at the stage of indigo dyeing, we are stricter than the gods. And then with our Tunisian partner, um, Denim Authority, uh, that's our confection um, in Tunisia, um, we specifically collected certain chemicals. It's actually five products, nothing else. Um, and then, uh, yes, um, my colleague, our PM and designer, um, yeah, it was a big challenge for her. Um, she was one week over there and keeps uh, traveling over there. Um, but it turned out pretty well. So we are able to reduce also water usage, electricity yeah. usage um, during the finishing stage. And that's actually a good um, a good point you're touching on. I mean, we're using. We're also saying standards are are good as long as 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 they are a, a, they are a tool. They are not the solution. They are a tool. And um, in the end of the day, it's about impact, right? So when it is about um, working also with big players, they have the sustainable development goals. They have science-based targets. They may be a signatory of the UN Climate Charter. They, um, the OECD due diligence guidance. There is so much with so the, these big brands. They approach you as the supp supplier, and they will ask for uh, impact data, uh, savings, um, concrete, like all these, um, um, especially on emissions, of course, that 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 makes them achieve their targets. So, how um, how hard is that, and what? How ready are you to, to deliver all these? I know there is also LCA. We, we briefly touched on, on LCA. And um, so what, what can you deliver? We did, um, let's say, we played the game with the rules that the, these big players also already set. At. First of all, for ISCO, um, we are not dividing the customers like is the big player, is the medium-sized player, is the, you know, some, because you cannot imagine what you can catch a kind of, you know, the SME type of brand as an idea. Of course, retailers are big and, you know, the, they already direct the industry. But in ISCO, we have a customer portfolio more than 7,000. So it's a, something, a huge and snobby sentence, but no one, uh, if someone has ability to wear denim, no one passed away without wearing a denim made by Isco Fabric. So it's a huge responsibility. So we have to handle, you know, everything. And when you are having this kind of customer portfolio, 
Having a DNA, having a backbone, having an idea that you protect is so tough. This is the challenge. Because she wants gods. Someone from here wants PCI. Another one say, I want recycle. Somebody says, you know, the not recycle at all. I'm just thinking about, you know, the durability. So should we do everything? Yes. But how? By adding our DNA, by adding our innovation. And something should be single understanding and easy. As you said, simple. Whatever you do should be simple and easy and should be appreciated. So what we developed, first of all, uh, we have good partnerships, as I said in the beginning. We are the member of Sustainable April Coalition by beginning of 2015. And we are making HIC, HIC Fem Tool Using, and also the social part. So it's around, you know, the thousand members, not only the brands retailers, but also all tiers and the chemical suppliers also involving. We are, in the same time, member of the Zero Discharge Hazardous Chemical Program, ZDHC. And we are developing to do it in academic level, working to make it. So what this means to the academic level to reach CDHC, it means you already clean your hands. And in your kitchen, you would like to choose something as ingredient, not only you know, the from best shops, but also try to make you know, the worst shops as good as others. So make our suppliers to be certified as the good ones, as to eliminate monopoly ideas in the sustainability. This is our responsibility. Mm. In that direction, we said marketing is very important. Telling what you do, because we are the science based, you know, the talkatives. But in reality, the ones in the screen is what you do is the marketing part. But it should be also uh, real. Marketing and real. So it can be done by mathematic. Mm. Because 2 plus 2 can be understood as 4 anywhere in the world, even you don't know any language. Mm. So that's why instead of doing one article or one collection or one set sustainable or best in the world or greenest in the world, we say we are aware about what we do and we can prove it. Mm. That's why we receive life cycle assessment certified. I'm underlining certified because life cycle assessment as it is, is just a marketing tool. But if you get certification of your life cycle assessment, which is EPD, Environment Product Declaration, it means third part verified your tool. It's not so, the only so does methodology. That, does that mean, let's say, um, it's almost like a toolbox. I'm your customer, one of your 7,000 customers, and I can kind of pick and choose certain material of fiber composition, let's say BCI. This is this is and I, yeah, yeah, and I can, and I can um, kind of combine until I have my, my wonderful denim fabric, and then you can more or less press a button and tell me the, the, the footprint. No. Let's do like this. You are my customer, best customer in my 7,000, of course. <laughs> and after you. <laughs> so when you are, we are together and we are showing you the fabric, the collection. First of all, I don't want to push you to remind you this is sustainable, this is sustainable, because I already make a commitment that whatever you choose from us, from ISCO, has a sustainable part that I can prove. It's a big commitment. And I show you the collection. You are designer and buyer. You can be get bored, you know, when I talk too much about sustainability, because you would like to do your ideas, your dream. You choose a fabric. You like it. And you want to work, let's say, with Genealogy, you know, the platform as well, to make your garment maker to develop better in sustainability, your washing facility. So you need something in hand. You shouldn't sacrifice fashion. This is very important. Because unfortunately, doing sustainability is very old minded right now. All sustainable fabrics look like each other in the industry. I'm so, this is real. Also, you know, that I'm seeing around. But if it's fashion, even if it's sustainable, it's, you know, the very rare you can figure out. So in the beginning, as a designer, as a purchaser, you have some questions. You should ask some questions. First, technical sheet to how to treat it. Then, you know, the after technical sheet, some details like the weight, the color, of course, the price, it comes. Then I will ask questions, you know, the, to you, you know, the where should I ship it? And here comes, ISCO can choose. Wherever you want, we don't have to. Because in code of conduct rules of us, we are not only making brands happy, we have to be sure my tears are safe to make her happier. That's why she doesn't have to track and verify me because she's pretty sure that I already tracked all my supply chain on behalf of her. 
And then when we are doing the fabric, in the meantime, before you purchase any sample meter, we can send you life cycle assessment EPD report of the fabric for one scar meter production. So it means in the beginning, you are aware water and carbon footprint result of the fabric that you choose from our collection. So I don't have to chase it for six months to be able to... to uh, how many days, you know, the generally, <laughs> if it's not a, you know, the huge development, because it's a different blends, you know, the, it will take something like five days, six days, but if it's, you know, the, from our collection, uh, just after, you know, the, you can receive the same EPD report when you are receiving the technical sheet. So you will decide. Right. So here, the story, how much you would like to say kink is naked or not. Because choose your supplier, your fabric supplier, the dimensions, the all, you know, everything should be the same. And you look the fabric, you like the fabric, you have the results. And we open, if the transparency we are talking, EPD is not belong to us. We developed EPD in 2018 and we launched it to industry. And now any peer in the industry can use EPD. So she can request EPD from another supplier as well to compare and to compete if it's the true world. Because if I do a carbon footprint result, let's say the global warming ratio of the fabric that I produce for one square meter is 0 0.5, the fabric. If somebody does 0 0.4, welcome the challenge. I have to do 0 0.3. And um, first of all, I wouldn't even know, if you give me just a figure, I wouldn't know, is that, is that good or bad? Is that high or low? So I do have to have an understanding. Regular version, you have of, to see the regular version. Printing. Exactly. Now we developed, you know, we have developed, you know, the, our EPD life cycle assessment. After in a year's time, we also developed um, a story as well with our all fabrics in our all collections. Our Spring Summer 21 collection already launched at all, not as capsule, with a sustainable respect. So right now we can provide how we change, what we change in the fabric, and what's the difference when you compare, you know, the, our last 10 years collection. So this is also, we are sure, you know, the five years ago, six years ago, 10 years ago, it was not the same. Now it's better and should be better. So instead of saying, 70% less, 30% more, 40%, you know, the better. Which are great, these are great words, 4070, when you see in the screen. But nobody asks what is the A and B point to coming, you know, the 70%. Now we welcome industry to talk the realities, what is done. Mm -hmm. That's, that's um, talking about impact also. I mean, we've come a long way, obviously. And we are at a certain status quo, which, um, of course, we are talking on, I mean, we're re definitely representing best practice here. So one question to you, Patrick, when we're thinking of um, impact and um, obviously not everywhere in the world and not every producer is uh, working accordingly, what do you think is needed from a collaboration point of view to, to move faster. I mean, one thing you said is being kind of price neutral so that implementation can be enabled everywhere in the world, basically. But when you think of the next years, what is needed from, from, from customers, from brands, from, from a also investment point of view, from I mean, what we can sit here and, and, and talk about, uh, talk about it a lot, but what, what you as, a, as an expert in, the, in that field, what do, you, what do you think is needed to move also the, the big mills in Asia and... and I mean, 70% of our business we are doing in Asia today. So it's a huge number. Uh, we are shifting a lot of people towards Asia right now from our organization just to be closer to the market and, and support much, much closer. But and how open, how open is it? Is the call coming from the customer? No, or no, is the no. call also coming from <coughs> the aspect of I want to safe on water and energy and chemicals and on, 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 on I think every country has its uh, own um, how you say movement its own dynamic still today I think the brands are the most important things if the brand decide today we want to become more sustainability then we have to follow that's it fact so how we're going to do it again we have to sit together and we have to make it so in in Asia and Far East it's a brand where uh, 
they say you have to change. In America, slightly different, I'm, well, not slightly different, saying Levi's decided to change their sourcing model, not only become more sustainable, they lost ground towards the retailers. So they became slow, they became unfashionable, they had issues with their fabrics, too many varieties, they couldn't control their sourcing map, they call us on the table and um, come up with a solution. In Turkey, we have a beautiful example because um, Turkey is a very advanced denim market. And in Turkey, there are people investing already. Um, we, we have in, in, uh, in Malatya an investment happening where they just decided, they believed in the future, in this move. It's not a movement anymore, it's a fact that we can produce sustainability. And they decided they set up a factory where no stones are entering, there's no spray cabin, and uh, what you said, I love that you selected five chemicals. This is amazing, and this is a key part. And they say we only use five, maximum seven chemicals. Did they change a factory? Or they, no, they brand new. From scratch. Brand new. That and they say we don't even take the old people on board, because for them to change the old people is very tough. The mindset, oh, let's make another stone, let's add another spray. Let's, um, they're afraid that their know-how is not wanted anymore, so they still cook the old soup, and they say we have to cut that one. These people, they didn't convert the system, they implemented this new production way in six months. Mm -hmm. We have other people where we are working since five years, we haven't changed it yet, mm -hmm. okay? There is a, it's a great dynamic. What we need to do is um, transparency and we need numbers. I love that one, what you do. Facts, facts are counting. Now, if I'm gonna say, also in the laundry, um, I'm saving 50, 60, 70% of water on what, what I'm doing, but if I can say, if you use our system, which is a totally closed system, and any kind of wash, 90% of all the washes in the world, what, what we are, need to do, we can do on the system, I do with less than 500 milliliter. That's a statement. And this is what's happening today. Because um, we have a closed loop cycle where we even recycle our own water from the washing machine and reuse this water. The only water what we are losing is out of the drying system when the water gets vaporized and back to the atmosphere. It's not a discharge, it's a clean water which goes back to the dis um, atmosphere. So, who is picking it up? We'll do. We have beautiful, we call it Laundry 5.0, we just opened in Pakistan, we opened in Bangladesh. People are investing, governments are helping. Governments give some funds for wastewater treatment. Uh, in Turkey, we a lot of help from the government um, for, for training, universities, and those kind of things. We need to make, we, we need to tickle. We need to find every penny from your, your high school. Amazing. We need to support those kind of things where um, young people get trained and, and they, they just don't want to do the old way anymore. That's, that's the fact. So these, so these um, um, young um, professionals, um, you, do you think they're coming with a completely different mindset and then they are kind of confronted with the with the old school um, doers, and who translates? I mean, who it's who helps them find each other? It's very funny. We we, we have the very funny um, experience. We have also a small little school, but we do it in Valencia by ourselves. So we train five six people every every year, every every six months, if possible, from all over the world. We're pulling them in, and they don't have to be from the fashion industry. They have to have a uh, a fashionable understanding, maybe they're uh, um, a graphic designer or something, and we're going to make a laser designer plus with some washability on, on, on that. But they're coming from all over the world. They've never seen a stone wash, a stone washing machine and a spray. What they do is they're creating the wash digital, and then from the digital we go to the machine and make the sample coming up on front there. So after the training, um, we, we have an agreement with them. They have to go somewhere around the world to our partners, and they stay six months. It can be in LA, it can be in Bursa, it can be in Cologne, it can be anywhere where our partners are. Um, it can be Pakistan, Bangladesh, whatever it is. So these people go into the field discussing with the old people with using the old technology, suddenly saying, well, um, this is my, my first sample, my first try, and the guys say, no, we have to add some more permanent spray. The, the guy's never seen permanganate spray. So how you want to explain what is a permanganate spray, which is fantastic. They say, no, no, we have to uh, increase the intensity of the laser and the thing is done. Mm -hmm. So the language is changing. We are not talking about chemicals anymore. Today we are talking about wet pickup. We're talking about ozone concentration. We talk about pixel time. We are not talking about pH value. We are not pay talking about those kind of things. It's gone. 
And this is what we have to bring over. We have to make this, we, we have a problem in, in our industry. We don't find people even going to work in the laundries anymore because it's too dirty. It's a hard job. You're carrying chemicals. You have the smell. You, the, the, the worker is not, is, is not a happy, clean working place. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can transform it, we have, again, people happily working there. And we see that, the places which are transformed in anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, uh, this is so imp super important that we're not talking about niche, but we're really talking about transformation where the big volumes and the big exactly. players produce, definitely. What I would like to do is um, hand over the microphone um, to our wonderful audience. Um, do we have any questions specifically? Um, yeah, um, my name is David. I'm working in research and some consultancy project. I've done some work in, 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 in uh, denim as well with different supplies in Tunisia or Vietnam. Um, and my question would be, it's very interesting to see that there's so much development also in technology. If I look in, in Genealogia or ISCO, who is very open about that. But now if there's like a tremendous change happening in our, I don't know, we have been working in jeans for like 200 years with cotton. So what happens now if we go into, I don't know, bio-based uh, chemical fibers or even petrol-based recycled chemical fibers? What would that mean for your technology? How likely do you see these kind of changes would happen? Is this really something that is a trend? Um, yeah, that's, that's my question because I don't know, laser with Thank you. petrol based, I, I don't know how it will work. Thanks. Excellent question because the raw material will matter on whatever these guys uh, are doing. Um, so I, I think this blends, is a question for, for blends, Banu and, all these uh, crazy. And um, from our point, it's a challenge, definitely, because any, any changes on, on the raw material need some certain actions. We are facing, as I'm saying, we, we, we try to do everything today in, in all kind of materials, but um, there are limitations today. So um, a limitation might be a high polyester uh, content in the fabric with the laser because um, we, we work with a certain heat, okay? Um, it's an issue we're working on. There, I can give an example which was already successfully done because uh, one of the issue was the stitching yarn, okay? Uh, which was basically a polyester core yarn and when the laser went over it, it burned and changed the color. Uh, with a cooperation with a &E, we changed that one and they launched a new yarn which is um, uh, not affected by the laser. So it's, it's one part going in this direction. Um, on the fabric side, it's a bigger challenge because if you have the polyester on the surface, um, it, it, it's, it's a bigger, bigger challenge. On the other hand side, we can uh, control our laser that good that we can mark on polyester and polyamide even. Still, we need to understand the indigo on the top of it, and it's it's an experience. We need to go through. We we need to challenge it. It's we mm -hmm. don't have a general rule for that from our side. So this again comes to close working relationships, exactly. um, where um, um, I don't yeah, know. It's absolutely. Do you have experience question. with also, for example, with uh, not only um, man-made cellulose like lyocell, but also how uh, about hemp? I would be no, very. No, I I just would like to you know the. Um, it's very important for me to answer this question by Patrick first, because um, this is the problem that the, as a technology partner that they are facing, you know, the, if the man-made cellulosic fiber, you know, the ratio is increased, you know, the adaptation of the laser, which is, you know, the when you compare with chemical, of course, is, you know, the runner, uh, very important. That's where, you know, the we, a few minutes ago we were talking, we have to come together to develop something. Um, we didn't come together at that time, but at the end, ISCO developed something. Um, ISCO has, you know, the patents and trademarks. That why we have patents and trademarks in terms of innovation to protect the rights. Yes, of course, but more than this to control the supply chain. And around six, seven years ago, a technology developed in ISCO for stretch called as recall. So with the recall technology, we make polyester man-made fiber, you know, the, just as a core and in this core base it and make the core spun with cotton. So this technology keeps the high elasticity level and the recovery in the meantime gives strength to the fabric and you hide the polyester. So with the core spun, laser technology, see the cotton and the indigo and not touch the polyester. So how much polyester we make in it, even we level up the scoring, Lazar techniques can be applied as well. So this really helps us. 
And for this technology, for this kind of, you know, the fiber and the fabric technology, we can develop better conditions for the scoring of the um, technology partners. But I can imagine it's not like you, you wouldn't change um, composition from one season to the next, because you, of course, have to start the journey all over again. If the question says or ask very bravely, what you think about, you know, the blends, how it should be to be sustainable, to be treat. Um, answer will be different for sure. Mm -hmm. And as ISCO, of course, you know, the, because of the Sanko, we are very powerful about cotton. You know, that this is the reality. But in the meantime, our technologies are, you know, the developed with the recycled polyester blend as well. So the difference, petroleum base, you know, the, with PTA values, what kind of recycled waste you use as making the recycled polyester is very important. That's why not only the GRS or the RCS certification, but also we are providing PIT, you know, the values of the recycled polyester, post consumer recycled polyester that we use in the blend to give the guarantee of not extra petroleum base done. This is after service idea that we provide. So probably when you just order a blend of 10% of, of, of polyester or recycled polyester with some suppliers, you might get these surprises of, of every material performing differently in the end, but not with, uh, with your material, obviously with... Um, um Denim is taught, you know, the only three by one, you know, the cotton blend, that's elastan polyester and the cotton story. And this is absolutely not right for ISCO. This is the heritage we respect, we developed, but this is not the reality. Mm. You need innovation. In innovation, you need fashion. So everybody likes to wear something comfortable, in the meantime, chic, be honest to each other. So by keeping the heritage of, you know, the using less of everything and making denim is not. So we already make, you know, the many blends, we can increase the polyester level, you know, the up to 30, 35, 40, and nobody can understand with the look and the hand touch. You need technology to develop it. So, um, any alternative fiber welcomed? Depends. Um, because marketing of alternative fibers and the focus of alternative fibers two different topics. First of all, um, the start, when we first start the business, as our, you know, the legends say, Durability of the fabric is very important. Strength of the fabric is very important. And how much we impact our value chain is very important. So when we are doing sustainability, if we give up one of them, it's meaningless. That's Thank why we developed everything in the durable term. And I'm sure there are more questions. We are running out of time. Um, you will find all three um, around now, of course, and um, you have a wonderful stand right in front. You have a stand uh, also downstairs, and uh, please get in touch with us. And if you also want to um, become also more of the doer, uh, not, not only talker, but doer, um, Textile Exchange, together with the Sustainable Angle, we will run a masterclass tomorrow from 1 to 3, and that will be a very hands-on session on mainly fiber and materials, so also touching on the whole um, um, beginning of the, of, the, of the product. Thank you very much for joining. I hope um, this was a meaningful session for you, and thank you to my wonderful three panelists.